Welcome back to the, the FNZ 90 Plus Free podcast, where free football supporters take a look into the dressing room, chatting to former professional footballers about their experiences on and off the pitch. I'm your host, Ashley Simons. If you're joining us again tonight, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcast platforms and leave a five star rating where possible. Also, tell your mates we have had some great guests on so far. The more, the merrier, I say. Tonight, I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues, Armchair Andy and Tux. Invitation for you both to speak tonight, but given this is episode six, Andy, and only your second appearance, mate, I'm starting to wonder if that armchair is having a detrimental effect on you. Well, we've got to live up to the name, haven't we, and, and the hype, so so trying to try to carry that on. <laughs> Tux, as we know, you're the Harry Redknapp of the pod, mate, and uh, we needed a Premier League striker to bolster the ranks tonight. Have you found one? I have found a Premier League striker, um, and he doesn't come much bigger than the, the name you're about to say. Well, we'll get into that, but you know, you're still letting me down on the big name we went on this channel. No news on Delhi Alabola, though. No, nothing yet. Uh, but we are very much trying to uh, put the feelers out there um, to see if Delhi can come on the show. So it's only a matter hold of time. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm on the. I'm here. <laughs> And you, and you want to put me down while I'm on here, like the biggest striker you want here. I, I might as well just give up right now and put it down. Well, look, Marcus, there's no <laughs> no that? way there's no way that Delhi Adebolo eclipsed you in football anyway, mate. We'll get on to that. <laughs> so, as as we mentioned there to, tonight, we are joined by a former striker who netted over 100 times in his professional career, 40 of which were netted in the Premier League. This player was worth a fair whack back in the day, totaling sums of £10 million for his services. It's Marcus Ben. Marcus, welcome to the show, mate. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I've just been to Waitrose. I was just talking to uh, Jamie Redknapp and um, uh, Peter Crouch, actually. We were queuing up to go into, um, and I was saying I've got to get home to speak to you guys. So, Wow. Um, so did you pass yeah. the pod on to Crouchy? That is absolutely well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Oh. Oh. Um, I was hoping for a dub there, mate. I was literally at Waitrose to get the baby milk and um, some dog food. So it is, it's not, it wasn't anything special. So, yeah, that's what that's I was good. doing. And then I just, I just I kind of uh, uh, touched upon them guys and they've got to do their family stuff as well. So, yeah. Well, Marcus, as this is a relatively new show, you won't be familiar with the format. So I'll give you a quick rundown of how it works. Just imagine you're in a pub with three blokes and for some strange, unapparent reason, you need to impress us with your best football stories. Um, I'm sure you've got a few in the locker. Uh, you don't mind that, do you? Oh, no, go for it. I mean, uh, impress people. I don't, uh, don't <laughs> ever try and impress people in the pub or with my stories. But um, and some, like, like we say, or like you probably know, uh, some stories are best left in Vegas. Um, so, um, <laughs> They're the ones we want to hear. Well, those are the ones I probably can't <laughs> tell you. So I don't worry. I try don't and worry. Give you I can try and give you best. We, we've can. got we've got this under control, mate. Tux, you're going to kick us off, mate. Go for it. Marcus, thanks again for joining us on tonight's episode. Uh, before we come on to your great career as a professional, um, I'd like you to take us back in time to where your love of football came from. Um, so I think one aspect of football's lot. Football's life uh, is often overlooked. Is the is the love of the game actually where it comes from? Sure. Um, so, from watching games, whether that be attending matches at a club you or your family supported, sure. or watching TV, mm -hmm. um, where did foot? What, what did football mean to you as a child growing up? Um, what memories can you can you share with us? I mean, as I, as I talk to people um, a, a lot over this time um, and and through my career too. Um, I, I wasn't really that much into football. I was more into athletics. Um, I used to watch QPR, the likes of Les Ferdinand, um, and um, go down to QPR. I used to live in Shepherd's Bush um, and go down and watch the likes of them, uh, Andy MP, um, uh, those sort of players. And um, I'd play five a side over a weekend or, or play kind of school football, but wasn't really into it. It was only... And the, the Blues are going to hate me for this. And um, I didn't say to them when I, I, I joined them. They said, the, the, the comment, sorry, not the commentators, the, the, the press said to me, who do you support? Who do you like? Um, who do you follow? Um, I said, I don't really follow anyone. But knowing that I, I, I well, not supported Liverpool, but I followed Liverpool from a young age. I, I saw the likes of John Barnes, Peter Beardsley, um, uh, that, that sort of calibre of player. 
um, it was on a Sunday. I remember a Sunday uh, match of the day being on and um, going to my nan's house, granddad and nan's house, and watching the likes of John Barnes. John Barnes is one of my favourite players uh, who I've had the um, privilege of meeting and becoming my friend too. Um, so that, that brought me into football. I then um, progressed and, and, and got better and then got um, called, up, well, um, called up for uh, Brentford, who are now in the, the championship. Or, or yeah, um, and uh, at that time we were in the second division, and um, yeah, they took me on and gave me a professional contract at YTS. It's not a um, uh, what's it called now? It's called a um, uh, not a uh, YTS. It's called a um, scholarship. Um, so I, I got two year uh, YTS and then got one year pro. So that's where it went from then. Yes, yeah, so obviously you yeah, touched upon your um, your early career then as a YTS, obviously with Brentford, um, and then going on to representing uh, a variety of sort of English clubs throughout your career, including uh, Crystal Palace, Port Vale, Sheffield United, Blackburn, Ipswich, Leicester, Everton, Charlton, Wigan, Birmingham, Middlesbrough, QPR, and Wolves. Uh, despite playing for a wide range across the sort of country, really, um, you stayed at the top of your game for a good while, uh, but average. Mm-hmm. Average around a year or two at each club. I mean, yeah. why do you think you couldn't particularly pin down one club as the place you could potentially call home? I mean, I look back on it, or, or whilst I was going for it, it was kind of because I was moving on and maybe we got relegated or maybe we got promoted and they needed to make some money off of me or, or the club went into administration. And that happened at quite a lot of the clubs that I was at. Um, so um, if I could talk you through it... Um, not so much uh, Crystal Palace or Port Vale, but Sheffield United. I, I made my way. I became a drawer. I left London, um, uh, get, got a bit more experience. My name got better. Um, my price tag went up. Um, so then I went to Blackburn. Um, we got promoted. Um, so that was the first promotion that I had within my career, playing alongside Matt Janssen, Damien Duff, Damien uh, Dunn, um, Craig Hignett. I mean, I could go on. The, 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 the players within that club, Mark Hughes, um, Nathan Blake, it taught me how to um, play alongside international and um, premiership players. Uh, or, but we weren't in the premiership, but we got into the premiership. Um, but getting into the premiership meant that um, my price tag went up and um, the club wanted to bring in um, Andy Cole, um, so they needed that money to bring in uh, uh, an experienced, uh, an established striker. Um, so I then moved on to Ipswich, um, who were an established team in the Premiership, who went into Europe the season before, done really well, um, having the likes of um, um, Matt Holland, Titus Bramble, um, uh, the, the, the players that were in that team, Herman Ryderson. Uh, in that team at that point were established premiership strikers, uh, sorry, strike um, players, uh, players. So um, I jumped to the chance. I didn't want to leave Blackburn, but um, I had to go and Graham, uh, the manager, Graham Souness, um, uh, an amazing manager and a good friend of mine still now, um, helped me to move on and, and, and progress in my career. So you just touched upon your time at Ipswich, and that's probably the um, the club that you spent most time at. Is, mm-hmm. is that a club that you could call home, or is there is there another club that you may have spent time at less and called home? It was probably it was probably the nearest place or nearest club to London I could call home. Um, so I'd, I'd literally it'd take about an hour and a half, hour and forty five to get home back and forth. But I lived in Ipswich. Um, but it was easier to get back from Ipswich to London, London to Ipswich. But um, I wouldn't, I, don't, I didn't call it home. No, home is always London. Um, but um, I would actually call Manchester um, up north um, home because I spent majority of my time, majority of my career up there, uh, being Blackburn, which is not Manchester, but it's you have to go past Manchester. And I, when I started at Blackburn I, I based myself in Manchester so uh, Manchester's like my home yeah yeah I think I think it's fair to say mate that you've had some noble memories in football um, mm-hmm. by no you know no way shape or form 
am I denying that your time at Brentford or or Palace was, you know, you, you came through the ranks there and you went to Palace and, and you made a stand, but you really did burst onto the scene with that hatter against West Bromwich Albion for Sheffield United. Can you take us back to that? Yeah, no, of course. Um, again, you've just hit me with a question uh, against West Brom hat-trick. Um, I mean, the hat-trick that I scored against Man City at that point, or playing for Sheffield United, I remember. The one against West Brom, I can't really remember so much. But um, being at Sheffield United, I'll touch on that, um, was a time where I, I got comfortable within um, my football career. Um, I felt safe. I felt at home. Um, the teammates around me and the, the fans were um, very uplifting. They, were, they, they supported me 100%. Not that any other fans in uh, any other team didn't support me. It was just, I became a man. I became a man at that point. I became a, 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 a known player, I suppose. Not just Marcus Bent coming up through the ranks and uh, potentially going to do something. I mean, I, before I went to Sheffield United, I, I played for the under-21s and... Um, uh, then went to Port Vale, didn't, I didn't score or I scored one goal in that season and didn't get called up again. So it was about me um, stamping my, my career, my life, my, my, my talent, my, um, um, my worth. My, I mean, there's so many words that I can put at it. Um, at, at, at playing for... England or playing for a club that I, I, I want to commit to. So Sheffield United was a, a big, big, I'm not even going to call it a stepping stone. I'm going to call it a big um, career jump and um, something that I relished and they helped me to get to where I am today or where I was at the height of my career. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a huge club, you know, and, and a, a club that, you know, is done well in recent years, got back into the Premier League. Yeah. But you went, then went to sign for Blackburn and you obviously got promoted with them to the Premier League. Yeah. Um, can you just summarise your time with Blackburn? I know you touched on it a minute ago, but what was sure. it like to play for them? Oh, I remember um, uh, Graham calling me uh, the night before I left and I remember going to um, Bramwell Lane. Um because again, like I said to you, it was a, an amazing club for me. I, I had some great, well, a great couple of years there, scoring some good goals with some young players, mature players, and experienced players. Um, it was like a, again home for me. But I know I had, I knew I had to move on. I had, I needed to progress. So I remember walking out and saying bye. I cried. Um, I think I've cried at every club that I've left. To be honest. Um, but um, turning up at Blackburn, the training ground, Graham um, Sunis, um kind of um, waiting at the, the, the training ground door, um, seeing the likes of Mark Hughes do an uh, overhead kick, which he's um, known for. Uh, the training ground, Craig Hignett, Matt Yatson, you know, um, Nathan Blake, uh, Craig Short, the, the captain, his old school dinosaur, but he... he, he t- these sort of players taught me how to progress and be the the, the, the man and the man and the, not just the player that I wanted to be, but just the man in in general that I wanted to progress to and be in my life, sort of thing. So um, it was daunting. Oh, two guy, uh, <laughs> two guy. What a player! What a player. What? Oh, what a player! Oh, just, I just I didn't even mean to leave him out, but what a player! But what a nice guy on and off the pitch. Um, but anyway, we got um, promotion, and I played a, a big part in that. Um, um, but I only played a big part because of the manager and the players around me that helped me to get to that point. So, so you were uh, you played under Neil Warnock for for a little while, and he seems a hell of a character. Um, oh. Just just you know from 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 looking in from the outside. Um, what what have you what are your what are your memories at the time of of Neil Warnock and did you ever go bowling with him? I've heard quite a few stories of how good he is at bowling. No, we didn't go bowling with him. Um, uh, Neil, Neil Warnock, I, I, I didn't mean to hurt him or but he's an amazing guy. Um, coming in from, um, I think he came in from non-league um, to Sheffield United, um, so he's a bit raw. But one thing about Neil is that he, he's, he's, his personality and the way he manages players' personalities, um, 
I don't mean to, I'm not going to put him down or disrespect him in any way because of, of his coaching or, or, or ability to coach players. I think he's probably got better as, as he's gone on. But at that point, he wasn't amazing. He had a um, second in charge that probably helped him along the way. But um, the way he spoke to you, the way he um, mentored you and um, put confidence within you, when it, it meant you wanted to go out and play for him, play for the club. Not so much play for the club, but play for him. Um, so in that sense, I, I still have a fond memory of him and I, I, I'm still a lover of Neil Warnock. Um, and I've not spoke to him for a while, but he took me back to QPR at one point. Um, I was getting on a bit there. But anyway, we'll get, we'll get on to that in a bit. And um, just doing, doing some research as I was earlier um, around you and your career, I, I, I did see Warnock talking about you and Paul Devlin. And... Right there was a bit of an altercation in the dressing room where you sure. might have squared up to each other and had a bit of a paddy. He, he seems to talk about it kind of fondly. Is sure. it something you can laugh about now, those sort of situations, getting all oh, fired definitely. up? Definitely. Don't get me wrong. Like, in day-to-day life, sometimes you, you get frustrated with people. I mean, playing for a team, um, being down, being up, you know, there's egos, there's, um, there's confidence within, and sometimes people need to... Um, talk to each other and put well not put down but you know just uh, cut them down a little bit um the, the occasion that happened uh, on the pitch I think it was a, a midweek game um I don't know whether Paul passed I think Paul passed me a ball I didn't quite get there um we kind of blamed each other Paul uh, ran up to me on the pitch um and um I found it quite embarrassing the way he addressed me on the pitch. Um, so I couldn't address it the way I wanted to on the pitch. So I waited till half time. I went into the change rooms and um, um, we kind of went head to head. Well, not head to head. We just stood up to each other. And um, yeah, it, 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 it didn't get to the point where there's black eyes or broken toes or broken feet or broken uh, you know jaws or anything like that. But it, you know, we had to be pulled apart, and but it was good. It's good in a sense that we're back, we're passionate about what we want to do. And I mean, it got squashed straight away. Um, Neil, the manager, um, told us to sit down, and we all listened and got on with it. Um, me and Paul um, probably didn't talk for about a week, I think. Um, but after that, we got on with it and we moved forward. So yeah, yeah, I think that's it's it's part of the passion that football brings, and. Mm-hmm. And you, you love it and, and you hate it all, all, all kind of at once. And, let, me tell um, you, let me tell you this. You've just asked me a question, right? And I always tell the truth. I tell you the truth, regardless what you say. If it comes to my family, I'll, and I don't want to talk about it, I won't talk about it. I promise you now, Barcelona, Man United, the biggest teams in the world, they will square up to each other. They will have arguments. But once it gets off the pits, they all be friends and they get on with it. It's just like day-to-day life. It doesn't mean that people are aggressive or, or angry. It's just they're passionate about what they're doing and sometimes caught up in the moment. That's all it was. I think we can say safely say that a lot of that passion is missing from today's game, I would say in some, some way, shape or form. But Marcus, let's have a look at your career a bit further. You joined Ipswich Town, obviously a club close to where we live, uh, for £3 million. Uh, you scored nine goals in 22 Premier League starts. And, you know, you went on and you won Premier League Player of the Month in that season. I mean, that, that is no mean feat at all. Talk us through that. Um, I think, so in that season, we had Thierry Henry, um, Bergkamp, um, I mean, Freddie Lindbergh. Uh, 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 yeah, we had Owen uh, Heskey. I mean, the the top three was um, Arsenal, Man United, Liverpool. I think Man City weren't in the the, the that kind of that situation at that point. Um, but we done really well um, from the start. Um, I, I just hit some form. It, everything I touched, my touch was good. My confidence was good. The team mates around me, my captain, Jim McGilton, Matt Holland, uh, the defence, Titus, um, and then Darren Bent and Darren Ambrose coming through. Um, Pablo playing up front with me um, and other players. Uh, George, Georgie 
on the left. Um, it was it was a good time. Uh, the fans were brilliant. It was a full stadium every week. I don't know what happened. Um, we got relegated. That no, we went into administration, but we did get relegated. Um, Herman Ryderson again. I forgot about Herman, um, but um, I don't know. I, we started well. I, I was just scoring without even thinking, and that's what a striker wants. Yeah. Um, so I literally took the Player of the Month trophy, and Arsene Wenger actually it was on the board, and he gave he said Marcus Spence should get that trophy. Um, so that's a, a an achievement in itself. I, I'm very fond of Arsene Wenger, the way he plays football and the players that he's brought into England and how he coaches, or, or did coach, sorry. Um, so I got that trophy. Um, again, we we went down and went into administration. So that trophy meant a lot to me and it still does, but it, it was hard to um, have that trophy with me and not still be in the premiership with the administration and what was going on. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, it's no, you know, no secret that we're Ipswich fans, but um, in, in terms of where, we, you know, our minds are being, it, you know, we still can't get over the fact that we finished fifth the, pre the previous season and, yeah. and then got relegated the next. And we, we always think about it. And I mean, we're talking nearly 20 years ago now. I mean, I'm, I'm forgetting Marcus Stewart as well. Marcus Stewart, who yeah. I played up for. What a, a legend and a striker. I mean, the team we had, I, don't, I, I really, do you know what? Without, I don't know what, what went wrong. I don't know what went wrong. Um, some, some, the, we had a, a, a great, a good defence. Not going to say a great defence. We had a good defence. Um, a good midfield. And a, a, a we had a, Good team, yeah. not a great team, a good team um, who should have maintained premiership status. Um, but for some reason or not, we didn't. Um, and with administration coming into it, I think it just that was the final hammer on the head that that kind of knocked us down a level. And you know, the people in the backroom staff, there were people that you know, kitchens or people on the turnstiles that were working for the club had to lose their jobs. So and as a footballer, you do listen to that and you do feel um, the loss of people. Um, but it happened and um, I had to move on. Yeah, so obviously we know at this point in your career, you've, you've basically arrived. You're, you're hitting your form when you need to. Um, but we know you left it so just part of, as part of their attempts to steer away from administration. The same may have happened at Charlton as well, in, in some way, shape or form. Did that affect your playing career, would you say? Leaving Ipswich didn't affect my playing career because, um, um, like we've just spoke about, I got um, Premiership Player of the Month um, and I was scoring goals. And at that point, I became a little bit more truer, a little bit wiser. I was still, uh, what was I, I think 25, am I right? Yeah, around around that age, um, so I was I was coming up to my kind of uh, good part of my career. Um, I mean, let's not forget you said you helped you went to Everton and helped them get into the Champions League as well. You know, it's no mean feat. Well, well, well. Before we get to that, I went to Leicester. So Leicester were in a, 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 a terrible position at that point as well. With Mickey Adams there, um, but again with the likes of Les Ferdinand, I mean. Brian Dean, uh, Ben Thatcher, um, oh my God, Matt Elliott, captain, uh, Ian Walker, goalkeeper, uh, Paul Dickoff up front. What a, like the team around me was just insane, insane, absolutely insane. Um, went in there, actually done really well. Um, yeah, nine goals, weren't it? You scored for them. Nine goals. Um, I mean, we we needed to win. I think it was four games at the end of the season to stay up we were 3 nil up against Tottenham Wolves um, I can't remember the other two and then we ended up losing 4-3 so whether, whether I put that on my defensive um, uh, team or not I don't know but attacking we were just insane we had such a great team uh, Muzzy is it Jesus what a 
team we had there. Um, but we ended up going down again. But Everton came in um, off season, and I jumped at the chance. Um, again, they would they nearly got relegated the season before yeah. too. Um, so they were just a few, a few points ahead of Leicester, weren't they? A few points, a few, a few points. A few points. Um, I remember scoring um, against Ever, uh, sorry, yeah, Everton for uh, Leicester. Uh, end of the season, I just had my little baby girl, Aaliyah May Bent, and um, scoring at the back post. And uh, we still went down, but um, yeah, Everton um, called me up and said, um, do you want to come and play for the Blues? Wayne was Wayne was going to Man United. He had his metatarsal that he um, uh, not playing for England, but um, he couldn't play for England. Um, so again, it was another upheaval. I had to move on. I had to travel. Um, I couldn't spend more than two years at a club. Um, it was getting further and further away from my family and friends. It was frustrating. But don't get me wrong. Um, this was the one for me. I moved to Everton. I became um, stronger, better. Not saying I wasn't stronger and better at Ipswich or Leicester or anything like that, but just the, the calibre and how the professionalism or just the, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, and I don't mean to disrespect you guys because Ipswich have a great um, foundation and a great uh, history. Um, but Everton, um, being Everton, uh, was the, the, the pinnacle for me. There's no, there's no comparison. I mean, you know, any Ipswich fan would sit here and, and say that there's yeah. no comparison I, I, between... Yeah, Everton. I don't, I don't mean any disrespect in that sense. No, um, but it was, it, it was my, pin, it was the pinnacle for me. And um, playing alongside the likes of Alan, the Alan Stubbs, um, uh, Tim Cahill, yeah. you had there at the well, time, didn't you? Well, Tim, Tim, Tim came after me. Um, I mean, Duncan Ferguson, Kevin Campbell, um, Kevin, uh, I mean, uh, Carsley, uh, Kevin Kilban. Uh, oh, bloody hell. Um, uh, you do well to remember all those names. That's what I mean. There's just so many. Uh, <laughs> Arteta came in. Yeah. Um, they were ju- it was just a different level. And um, again, like I said to you about Blackburn, seeing this, this level of players, it just I had to grab it and kind of reach, reach, reach. Do you know what? I was just about to say reach for the stars, but that's absolutely not what I want to say because that's like, what, what's the t- reach for the stars? That's top seven, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite. It's quite. That's quite gay. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> not that I've got anything to think about. Yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm babbling now. Anyway, um, yeah. So I got there and um, just hit the ground running. We lost against Arsenal four uh, zero first game of the season. Didn't stop. Um, and I started the second game, and from then, um, I think we probably lost about four or five games that season. Um, we didn't win them by a, a big margin. The majority of them were one or two nil. But um, we had a formation, one up front, which was me. Um, got frustrated at times, but we worked with it. Um, because I wasn't getting many chances, Tim would score the majority of goals because I'd kind of set them up or make the runs. But really and truly, I just at that point, I learned how to be a, more of a team player and... Um, and I enjoyed not so much being um, everyone's um, batting ball, or it was more so we all took it on board ourselves to um, take it, uh, just just be a team and, and go out there and be responsible for our actions and the way we played. And that's why I love it so much. And the fans, they were always like a 12th man on and off the pitch and to this day to this day um, I've got a lot of love for them and they got a lot of love for me so um, yeah Everton is definitely one of my favourite teams and I always go back and see them once in a while Yeah Marcus from what you've said you seem to about all the other teams you seem to be playing your best football when you're at your happiest when you've got when you feel like you've got a good team around you and and you know leaders and and a good good strong manager. What 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 was David Moyes like at Everton compared to what you'd experienced before? 
Well, let me touch on what you just said then. And it's not when I'm... Definitely, you, you always, regardless whether you're a footballer or not, just in everyday life, when you're happiest, you, you, you do the best you get. It's like you guys talking to me. If you weren't happy today, your question would be probably shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? And I'm going to say it how it is, right? Now, being on your happiest and you're doing what you're doing, don't get me wrong, we're in our, the, the position we are. And it's frustrating, but you're saying what you're saying, and you're hopefully you're enjoying this this um, podcast or, or Zoom, whatever you want to call it. Um, but being at Ipswich um, was a good time for me. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was just knowing that I had to move on and uh, better myself because of the the situation with Ipswich and what happened and the losing money and having to sell me I had to move on um being at Everton the manager brought me in and um I don't really want to speak too much about him but um what I will say to you and I'll try and be as honest as I can um I left because I lost respect for him um I worked very hard for our side Everton my players our players uh, to get fourth place and um, he didn't show me the respect that I felt that I deserved and um, that's where I lost respect for him um, so I, I respect him for giving me that opportunity but I don't respect him for the way he treated me if that makes sense yeah totally I mean um, again from what you've said you've with under Neil Warnock as well, he was a great motivator, and sure. you've you, you've always been a player to put a shift in and and not not shy away from that. And I mean, um, I wasn't always I wasn't always a player that put in a shift in. I promise you that at Ipswich I didn't put a shift in. I didn't run about like if there were times. I mean, there were the balls that were ten yards away from me, and I wouldn't run after it. Um, but again, that's that's Paul Dickoff taught me how to be a hard worker, and that's what I mean. I became I became wiser, and that's what helped me to become a better player um, uh, going forward. Yeah. So when you when you joined Everton, uh, I, I think the, the the season before Duncan Ferguson had just rejoined from Newcastle sure. uh, for the second time. Yeah. And rumours are that you didn't speak for two weeks following your arrival, or he didn't speak to you. And I mean, I, I, I always, I mean, people are always picking up on this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's, it's kind of an ongoing joke, but yeah, no, um, he spoke to me. Um, how do I put it? Um, he was sounding you out, was he? Or Yeah, no, how do I put it? I'm going to put it, I'll put it in a different way for you. Um, I got to the club and um, uh it, it wasn't standoffish. He was a, a mature player, a very high class player. Um, I, you know, I'm coming in. I think at that point I was known for a bit of an attitude. And if you look back at Leicester versus Everton, uh, last game of the season, he had a, a rumble with um, a German player who, um, and Dunk got sent off. And I tried to stop Dunk. Um, so I don't know whether that was part of it but yeah no he didn't speak to me for about a week it wasn't two weeks he didn't speak to me for about a week I mean he said hello and stuff but he didn't speak to me properly like the other players so I said to McFadden James McFadden like what's wrong with Dunk is Dunk okay like can't work him out he said he's he said he's working you out I said okay um so anyway it took probably two weeks and then um Praise the Lord, he started <laughs> me and um, cuddling me and um, we became good friends. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a good guy, Dunk. Strong character, um, great professional on and off the pitch. Uh, great Evertonian, been through a lot in his life. Um, so um, I took a lot from being around him and playing alongside him, especially in training. And, and we didn't play so much on the pitch because we played one, one up front. But um, what I'd always take from him and, and the likes of Kevin Campbell is that they would always pat me on the back and congratulate me 
when they weren't playing. It wasn't just about them. It was um, it was about the team. So that's where I learned team values and what a great team I had around me. Marcus, look, by, by no two ways about it, you were not done with your career um, after Everton. I mean, if we look back, you know, I'm just going to take a snippet here um, and we go on to other questions, but a Premier League hat-trick against your former club, Blackburn. I mean, in a game that saw two tra- two hat-tricks from opposing sides. The, the only time that's ever happened in Premier League. And so, did you say two times? That's only happened once, and there's only been two hat tricks in one game. So, I'm in the the history, history. so what you're saying is I'm in the history books again, right? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How you know you you weren't done, mate? You made the history books. So are you happy about that? I mean, take us back to that. Uh, I mean, I, it's it's funny that you say that. I'm, I didn't even know. Um, am I happy about it? I'm not going to go downstairs and have a beer or two because. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, again, I was at, I went on loan to Wigan from Charlton. Um, Steve Bruce was the manager. Emil Husky uh, was injured at the time. Um, I was playing. I was doing really well. I think I was the number one striker within the first six months of the season. I had the most uh, number of goals. Um, whatever happened. Uh, Wigan, I don't know. Uh, and again, what's in Vegas stays in Vegas. I can't really tell you too much about that one. Um, but yeah, yeah, playing against Blackburn. I don't think I played against Blackburn for a, a, a quite a few years, actually. Um, and then it, uh, they came to us. And um, uh, yeah, we were, I think we were 2-0 down. Um, oh, I, I can't remember. Won the game, one the game five three from memory. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we were literally down and out at that point. Um, and yeah, um, the team kind of got together, and um, I ended up scoring a hat trick. Yeah. Um, I only took the ball because we won the game. Um, so I grabbed it off of, uh, what's his name? Um, the Black Roque okay, Santa Cruz, I think Santa it was. Santa Cruz, what a great player he was. Um, so he scored a hat-trick too, and, but I only got the ball because we won the game. So, And I, I ended up having to grab it off him. So. Sort of touching upon what you're doing at the moment, obviously, uh, I think recently you've just signed for Cornwall United. So getting back into the football of things as well. So sort of take me through. Uh, I didn't sign. I didn't sign for them like I was going to have a career with them or yeah. anything. So I knew the manager, and um, um, I was coming out of my, um, as we say, dark place. Um, and I thought, Do you know what? Let me just put my boots on and just go and have a kick about. He 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 had a lot of youngsters down there, and he just said, "Come and um, and enjoy and have a kick about." Um, yeah, so I just went and done that. Done that for um, a game. Um, it, uh, it was short-lived. Um, I mean, I probably was aching for about a week afterwards. Um, um, but I enjoy football. Um, I like to play football. I like to play. That we played a, um, the charity games and England, you know, all stars and um, veteran football at the minute. Well, not at the minute, but yeah, I enjoy it. But um, yeah, that was just the just going out there it wasn't a publicity thing it was just me going out there playing a bit of football that was it yeah yeah I'll, I'll, I'll hand you back to Ash but I mean from my sort of personal um, viewing of you as a player you know we obviously really enjoyed you being at Ipswich and stuff like that and you know you'll live long in the memory even for the short time you're kind of there really but yeah uh, again I well, wish you the best of luck but yeah I'll, I'll, I'll pass you back to Ash thank you boss so, Marcus, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on tonight, mate. I mean, Thank you've given you, us an insight into into your, your vast career. And, I mean, you, you were an, an incredible player back in the Premier League years. And, you know, you, you've done some things that many players would, would only dream of. So, thanks for coming on tonight, mate. And all the best, all right? Thank you, Ashley.